Hi, it's me, Dave Crane. How are you? I've missed you, and I've been thinking about you, not in a spooky, creepy way, but in a, you know what? Without me, and without you, we are not complete kind of way. And I think that's probably a nice way, but it probably sounds more creepy than it intended to. So anyway, today's show is all about making viral videos. Now, I know what you're gonna say, Dave, what is a viral video, and what do you know about making viral videos? Well, I'm gonna tell you everything I know about making viral videos on today's show. That's why I'm here, that's why I'm talking about it. This is Speak On Stage. Now, every episode I try to share with you um, the reverse engineering of a phenomenon, or a thing, or a business tip, or a, or a trick, or a technique, that I believe will get you your branding to be closer to where you need to be, because right now, in a world that's suffering from coronavirus and lockdown and disruption and digitization, many people in our industries where we don't know where they're going and we don't know what to do next. And uh, there are lots of elements that I know I can help you on. So that's what this show's predominantly all about. Now, if you're wondering what I'm talking about when I say viral videos, there are a number of them. Planking, um, the ice bucket challenge, um, the cinnamon challenge, the mannequin challenge, we'll be sharing with you some of the tips of these, but there's one in particular that I really love. I think it was illustrates on YouTube, I think predominantly is where this tends to happen, but TikTok is very good for viral videos as well. A viral video is something that when you watch it, you go, ah, oh, that was brilliant, and it hits you in some way. It usually makes you laugh, sometimes makes you cry, sometimes makes you angry, sometimes makes you hate something, but you can't take your eyes off it. It makes you want to share it with somebody immediately so they can feel the same way and either join you in the happiness or join you in the sadness and the anger. Does that make sense so far? Yes? Good. So with that, the idea of a viral video is it has to be short, it has to be succinct, and it has to be something that other people will either share with others or they'll want to do the same version of it of themselves. Well, now we're gonna create, in today's show, um, a load of awareness for you about what a viral video really is to have in it, how to make one, and also the importance of video marketing, and also I'm gonna walk you through the steps of some really good examples of huge viral videos. Now these videos will be watched by maybe 50 million, 100 million people, so when I'm talking about the fact that it had a big impact, you should look at it. Why? Because I think that will really have a big impact on your particular business when you know how they come together and how to make them work. And ultimately, that comes down to money. Why is that important? Because you've got to spend it, otherwise you've got to live in a ditch. But also the fact is, 80% of what goes onto the internet right now is video. That's what people watch, that's what people love. Okay, there's podcasting and there's like blogs and there's all sorts of other things that go on, but 80% is people watching video. So it's important to get it right. Now, what I have here for you as an example is what you've probably seen before. It's called the Harlem Shake. And share a compilation of them. Now, the idea was it was about a 30 second video split into two bits. 10 seconds, you had a room full of people and one person steps up and starts dancing and looking silly to some repetitive and annoying music. And then 10 seconds later, it explodes and everyone gets up with those crazy stuff. It's done in two sections, but it became incredible with like whole fields full of people and sports stadiums and offices and universities and just about everybody at some point doing the Harlem Shake. It became a massive meme, massive viral phenomenon. And I'm gonna share with you a couple of the ideas here and then we'll break down what you need to do to be able to get this to work. I hope you enjoy it. I love your thoughts, I love your comments. We go live onto Twitch, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Periscope, Twitter, um, and I think that's it so far. I'm sure I've missed out on something, but anyway, doesn't matter. If you are on another platform, then welcome anyway. But what I would say first of all is make sure you comment, I love that. Make sure you like everything, because it means that more people get to see it, and that means you've got a better chance of finding it in the future. But also make sure you subscribe. Follow me, connect with me, befriend me, subscribe on my YouTube channel. Doesn't matter which it is, it means that when I do future shows like this, and I do them almost every day or every other day, it means you won't miss out on anything at all. So with that, this is Speak On Stage, and this is an example of the Harlem Shake. Do the Harlem Shake. <laughs> Harlem Shake. Do the 
Harlem shake. So there you go, welcome back to Big On Stage, that's a Harlem Shake. Huge phenomenon, uh, about a year or so ago, people went crazy for it. When I say a year or so ago, it might have been two or three years ago. But since I've been in lockdown, I can't really tell what happened in the last year or so, because every day feels and looks exactly the same. I mean, I had my Christmas cup earlier, and I started drinking out that Christmas cup just after Christmas. I kept it going all the way through the year, and it doesn't make any difference. It just feels like every day is like a weekend, which is kind of cool, and I kind of love the way it works. So with the Harlem Shake, it was very simple. You get a group of people, and you get the buy-in. One person's going to be the mad one who looks a bit strange, and then one ignores them, and then everyone explodes into going crazy. And that was something that worked all around the world, with everything from army barracks um, standing in line and then suddenly going crazy in the snow to football teams and locker rooms and gymnastics teams and everybody. It became really addictive and very cool as well. So why are these things very important? Well, because if you can apply the rules of what makes something viral, you'll get more people paying attention to your stuff. I'll go through the importance of video marketing in more depth a little bit later on, but just bear with it. Make notes and let me know what your thoughts are. What's your favorite of all time? Which is the one that you like more than anything when it comes to viral videos? You may remember the one about planking. Sometimes they're really short, but don't do much. Planking was when you got to just lie flat like that, but you do it somewhere really unusual, like on top of a lamppost or um, on top of a car or in the middle of a busy um, no railway, not railway, but I'm sure people did. Lots of crazy stunts like that. There's the one with the Kiki Challenge where they'd play that song by Drake, you know, the Kiki one, and would jump out the car and dance alongside the car. Now, sometimes they're really cool and really funny, and sometimes they're really dangerous. People have jumped out of the car and been hit by a car on the other side of the road, seriously, and got really damaged as a result. Don't know what happened next, but they can be really disturbing. But for some reason, these are things that people really do enjoy getting involved with and doing. So I want to get into a couple more different options for you to see. This next one I'm going to share with you is one that we did at Dubai Rugby 7s. It's called a Mannequin Challenge, and this one was all about your ability to freeze and not move at all. And the camera would pan around a group of people who didn't seem to be moving. So they had a song that we played for it, which is Black Beatles. And um, I can't play any of the copyrighted music. I don't actually know if I'm going to get away with playing the Harlem Shake there. It might mean that the future um, replays of this video get blocked, in which case I have to go back and edit it and take that off. Um, and I have changed some music earlier, uh, like you'll find later on. Um, I, I changed it earlier because copyright music obviously gets into trouble when you're using videos. So you have to be very careful what you put out there. And so with the Black Beatles, every time I've shown this mannequin challenge in Dubai, um, on video on, on my show, um, I've had problems with the music, so I've had to change it completely. The idea is, for about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, what you do is you get the whole audience to freeze, not move at all. Now, we decided to do this, and you'll see me dressed as Fred Flintstone from, um, I can't remember where it's from. What's Fred Flintstone? The Flintstones. Duh. So it's from the Flintstones, and uh, with my partner in crime, Sam, as well. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So let me just... Uh, wet the whistle, as they don't say. So we're in the middle of a huge rugby pitch with about 45,000 people around. 
and we decided to make a mannequin challenge and we pre-warned everybody that we we're going to be doing it so we told them look we're going to be doing a mannequin challenge so for about 30 seconds we we're going to have everybody not move is that okay so we told everybody now this wouldn't have worked unless you'd already experienced the mannequin challenge and it was a thing that was going around um on youtube and so on anyway now that's important because even if you explain the words Often people are not paying attention, they're very visual, but they need to know from their friends what's going on. So as we said to people, we pre-warned them at the beginning of the weekend, we'll be doing a mannequin challenge, we'll tell you more about it later on. And we reinforced it a couple of times during that day. When it came to doing it, everybody, almost everybody joined in. Now the thing about it is you'll see the camera, and we're talking about 45,000 people here by the way, it's not a small thing I'm talking about with the build-up. The camera pans around, there are a few people who are not paying attention. A few people just dancing, drinking, making noise. You'll get that out of the 45,000 drunken crowd. But even so, I think at that time it was the biggest mannequin challenge that had happened on camera in the world. The next week, the rugby in uh, South Africa, I think, did a... I don't know if it beat us on numbers, but we did a much better mannequin challenge. Ours was just done on the cuff with the cameras just panning around the audience. What they did was they choreographed it. So when the Wednesday Mannequin Challenge, they got the camera to go through the changing rooms, to go up and out and all around. Then they swapped to different cameras and so on. It was really effective. I'm not gonna show theirs, I'm gonna show ours because I'm rather proud of it. So this is another viral video. And these can, this one I think got about 100,000 views. But all in all, Mannequin Challenges around the world would have easily got to about half a billion, maybe even a billion videos. So watch this next on Speak On Stage. Well, something just a little bit different now as we await the bronze medal match. The, cha the crowd is being challenged to a mannequin challenge. See if they can set a world record. There's about 50,000 people in here, and I guess we've got to do it too. Rob Vickerman alongside me. Here we go. So there we have it, Mannequin Challenge. Very exciting to do. You only get a few moments to get it right. And of course, with an audience like that, as you see, some people are dancing and not caring about it. But the majority of people bought into it and it really raised the atmosphere. And of course, we were on the map anyway, but it really helped to put that one particular event, that one particular weekend on the map amongst all the Rugby Sevens that I remember. I did it for about 20 years. So when you start doing it, you've got to get a buy-in. Everybody's got to want to play if you're doing one like that. Now, not all of them are. Sometimes it could be solo efforts. And we'll be sharing with you a solo effort in a few moments' time when we look at the Ice Bucket Challenge. Then meanwhile, as you're watching the show, you're probably wondering, right, what's, what's this all about? Well, I really do believe that in order to be effective, you need to know who you are and you've got to get some reach. Now, the idea of talking about the Ice Bucket Challenge or the Cinnamon Challenge, which is very funny, I'll be sharing that with you later on, is if you can stand out and you can be able to get people's attention, then they'll start seeing you as a leader. They'll start understanding that they've got to do some business with you and they start understanding that you know what you're talking about just purely because you are prominent than everybody else. So that puts you ahead in the game. Now, once upon a time, I did believe that everything was all about locality. So wherever you're based, you have to be the best in your driving area so people could drive to you because you've got a great reputation. But now this has changed substantially. Now it's about being the best online. And people will find you, will Zoom you, and I'll be sharing in a future episode what Bill Gates, who's going to actually be coming up on the show later on, was saying about the world post-COVID. 
and how it's going to change. One of the things he talks about, which I think is fantastic and really interesting, is the fact that Zoom calls and basically online conferencing calls will actually replace face-to-face -face in many instances. You'll have a simple conversation with anybody and they'll say, like, let's have a meeting. And they'll say, um, do you need me to come in person or can we do it online? And they'll probably say, oh, we'll just do it online. And you save yourself. I mean, what can you do realistically? You could do maybe three, four meetings a day if you're traveling around, allowing for half an hour, an hour in traffic each time before you get somewhere. With Zoom, you can go bang, 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 bang. Now, I say Zoom, it's a generic term. It's kind of stolen the video conferencing term. They used to mean webinars, it used to mean uh, Teams, they used to mean Meets, but Zoom kind of have a central space. Just like once upon a time, your phone was called a Nokia. Now you might not even remember that because Nokia are not really big players in it anymore, but at the time, every phone that anybody wanted and talked about was a Nokia. So therefore, any other mobile phone maker apart from maybe a BlackBerry, was called a Nokia. That all changes. It's really interesting how, how the, the trends can alter. But right now in lockdown, um, we're talking about video being really important and the changes that happen to people when they get themselves prominent are really important as well. So let's talk about the Industry Icon Program. And I'll give you a special free gift. With this gift, you can find out how prominent you are. You can understand what reach you have. And also with this survey that I'm gonna give you, you'll be able to work out how effective you are in your brand and your industry. When I say you are, it means your company. In a future episode, I'm just putting it together now, we'll be talking about personal branding and employee branding. The ability to turn to your staff and, and train them to know how your company works inside and out so then they can go and post on your behalf and on their behalf because there's synergy in the values and the mission. I know it sounds like it's like you're brainwashing your team. It's not that at all. If you do it effectively, it works out really well for everybody because they are being paid to work with you and they can reach people that you might not have reached. If you do an advert, a straight advert, people are going to say not interested. But if you can get your team to do it, that's more effective. So let's have a quick look at what your brand is all about, what it can be, and then I'll show you the Industry Icon Program. Your brand is everything. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you look, the way you interact, and the things you've done to help others. When you get your brand right, your industry understands instantly the value that you bring to the table. You're a thought leader. You're the high achiever in the room. And you are the industry icon that everyone turns to when they need to find that way forward. Because in a world where everybody's stepping up, you need to fly. Join the industry icon program with Speak On Stage. So the Industry Icon Program, uh, let me share with you what happens when you go and do your survey. You've got to go to Speak On Stage, which is this page here. If you go to speakonstage.com, you'll find this page and you'll see a picture of me looking all windswept and interesting and looking like I'm just wondering where did I leave my car keys. Uh, once you get there, just above you, you'll see this, the industry icon, the gold button. Press that and then it'll take you to a new page, which is all about the industry icon program. When you get there, scroll down a little bit and you'll find this button over here. This button here to take the free survey, click on that and there's a survey of about 10, 20 questions. And when you work your way through, it doesn't take long, it'll take you 10 minutes maximum. You then understand by scoring at the end how effective you are online, how connected you are, and how much people are taking notice of what it is that you do. Now, it might be the case that you don't care. You're saying, you know what, Dave, I'm not interested in being a brand. I've got a job, it pays good money, I'm, I'm not that bothered. Well, think about it from terms of having a side hustle. Would you want to have a second job? that allows you to bring in extra money or maybe a hobby that you do on a weekend that people will compensate you for? Or even how you can thought about the fact that your job maybe might not be as um, secure as you would think. If you were to lose it, and I hate to think that you would, would you have a fallback plan or would you go back into the job market because your job got reduced, because your industry got reduced and nobody wants what it is that you do? 
It's really worth thinking about this because the more effective you can be with your side hustle, the better opportunity for you to be able to weather the storm of dealing with any challenges. So with that, you get the opportunity to fill it in and then connect with me directly. Once you've connected with me directly, then we can have a 10 minute chat. I can see how I can help you. Um, or if not, then don't worry about it. In your email details, you'll be able to get my review of what I reckon you could be working on. So let's say what happens if you do decide to become an industry icon, you decide to work towards um, your marketing and your personal brand. You can do your TV shows like these, you do podcasts, you can do blogs, you can do more viral videos, you can get connected. There's a full roadmap to be able to push you to be more successful. And that roadmap, I will be sharing a little bit of that later on in today's show. Um, there's so many things involved in getting to where you really need to be. And it's very useful for you personally and for your business because your brand now is not just your business at all. When people look you up, your name comes up more than anything because of the social media platforms that you're on. So it's important to make sure that your name is, is prominent and you've got it all planned forward. Right, next up, let's look at some interesting videos. We're going back to the theme of viral videos of what makes them tick and it's time for reaching out. Facebook, Sheryl Sandberg, and Netflix's founder and CEO, Reed Hastings. I'm glad to give to ALS. It's a great cause, but I, I want to accept this challenge. I want to do it better than it's been done. Been working on this, you know, got this design. There we go. Yeah. It's going to be great. I'm here to join the people bringing attention to Lou Gehrig's disease by taking the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. I'm going to challenge three more people, Elon Musk, Ryan Seacrest, and Chris Anderson of TED. Consider yourself challenged. You have 24 hours. Good luck. So welcome back at Speak On Stage as uh, Bill Gates, a billionaire and wet person doing the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. And I did that challenge, I was challenged by a few people to do it, and you may have done it as well. So why did that work? Well, it's kind of guilt, because if somebody calls you out, then you feel that you want to do something about it. Now you may have seen yesterday's show, I rated the top 10 um, online video, viral video um, challenges. Um, top of it was, I think, that one, because I just think it really managed to get more people involved for a very good cause. It had everything in it, individuals, superstars, normal people, all getting involved to do the challenge and sharing it with three other people. That viral nature came from naming people, and then the, if you didn't do it, you had to give money to the cause. And a lot of people did give money to the cause anyway, and it raised a huge amount of money for the Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, so with that, you need to consider other elements. Now, one thing is, I mean, some of them are mad. Some of them make no sense at all. And some of them have no financial recompense for anybody whatsoever. So let's take the next one I'm going to be sharing with you. And that's the uh, cinnamon challenge. Now, I don't know if you've ever eaten cinnamon. Cinnamon's delicious, especially when you have it on a coffee or on hot chocolate or on cakes. Wonderful. But if you have a spoonful of it and you try and swallow it, it sticks to your windpipe. It sticks to the top of your throat. And it's really quite dangerous and horrible. So for some reason, that became a thing. Could you eat a spoonful of cinnamon, which looks completely innocent until you try and take it? And this became a thing. And from a very cruel point of view, when you watch it, you will you probably will crack up. I know certainly my wife doesn't find it funny at all. She just thinks it's gross. But there's something about me that made me laugh a lot. So I'm going to show you a video I've watched many times by a lady called Glozell. And you may have seen it before. And I challenge you 
to not at least find it a little bit amusing. Now, the sad thing is you're kind of finding it funny at somebody else's expense, but at the same time, you know that they're trying to prove to you that they could do it without any problems. So it's kind of like you're staring in at somebody. And if you think about reality TV and how that's been so important in popular culture over the last 10, 20 years, then you know seeing normal people doing abnormal things is a thing. So that's kind of a big theme. So now you get to see Glazelle, and I watched this, and about 50 million people have watched this video as well. I'd love to know what you think as well. Put it in the comments, give us your likes, your shares, subscribe, and let me know where you are and what you think of this. Is speak on stage. Hello, this is Glowzell. Is you okay? Is you good? Because I wanted to know. Okay, so 150 billion people have been asking me to uh, uh, do the cinnamon challenge. If you go to my fan page on uh, Facebook or any comments from the last couple of videos I put up, I did a cinnamon challenge. And I usually don't give in to peer pressure because. What's so challenging about cinnamon? Really? So, I, everybody's been getting on my nerves. I got some cinnamon. I don't even know what kind you're supposed to get. You know, because cinnamon is good for you. You put cinnamon on, like, you know, different drinks and stuff. So, um, you take some cinnamon. I guess. I don't. So, I have a spoon, and I don't have a spoon bigger than this. So, I had this, because I don't know how much you're supposed to take, so. You just take it, and I guess you count to 10, or you take it, and I don't know. All right, so here's the cinnamon, all right? All right, here go. Yes, I know it wasn't very pleasant and I apologize if you're eating your dinner or your breakfast or you're just having coffee and biscuits and you're saying, right, take the cinnamon off the table, not interested in that. But it's fascinating to see how these videos go viral because people watch it and the same reason you couldn't take your, take your eyes off, whether you hated it or loved it, is the nature of a viral video. We're going to be sharing with you next a video, um, I'm, I'm going to break down later on in today's show what makes it so important. Sometimes they're really constructive, sometimes they're really important, sometimes they're really personal as well. The next video I'm going to share with you is by a lady who wants to learn to dance over a period of a year. And so she created the video and she was diligent at getting it out to people across all social media platforms. Some people liked it, some people didn't like it, but you have to post it and then let people know and get people to get it. Remember, every social media platform has got an algorithm that looks out for viral videos. That's why if you're going to use LinkedIn or you're going to use Facebook or anything like that, if you are in a pod of people who are all looking at each other's videos and liking them within a very short amount of time, suddenly you start to get lots of traction and the algorithm says automatically, this is an important video, people are reacting to it, let's get it out to more and more people.
So that means a couple of things. When your post is important, you also have to babysit the post. You can't just leave and ignore it because if it stops moving, you can't start it going again. You also might want to let everybody know that that post is coming out at a certain time. So jump on it and start doing things with it. Now, one of the things that people like about this particular video, and it became viral, is you got a woman who decided that she wanted to learn to dance. And as you watch it, and I've changed the music on it, so it's not quite as effective with the new music, but I knew I would get blocked if I used the original music for copyright reasons. You start to see how she progresses over a period of one year from being, let's face it, a pretty ropey dancer. And you see her physically change throughout the video until the end, she does something special that makes you go, yeah, proud of you, girl. This is viral. This is cool. This is a lady who learns to dance and speak on stage. So welcome back to Speak On Stage, I'm Dave Crane, and hopefully that's inspired you to think about what you might do to go viral, or what you could add with the stuff that you do. So that's a video of a woman who over a period of time planned it, so this means that maybe your videos can't come out quite as often as you would want, but there's no reason why you can't have parallel ones going, of you in the gym, or you losing weight, or you saying the same thing to the same people day after day after day. There's a huge phenomenon of the amount that these challenges have grown during quarantine because people are pretty much bored and got nothing better to do. So there's a load of lockdown challenges. Just Google it. The only problem is that I did it a little while ago and showed it on the show. And because it was very heavily copyrighted, uh, they blocked the entire show for being shown again on YouTube. So thank you so much. And so I'll cut it out. That's why I'm being a little bit, little bit more careful now. So let's talk about this. He said changing the title completely. Um, where are we? I shouldn't have pressed that button, should I? Wow, live TV. I don't want to log into any of that. I want to go back to where I was. Oh, dear. Right, I think it was here. Let's see if it comes back to me. Come on. No, it's not going to happen. I had a really good post lined up for you, and it seems to have disappeared. So I might not be able to share it with you because Twitter's just hijacked everything. All right. So let me just see. I should know how to do this, by the way. History. Let's see. Do we share history, browsing history? Uh, 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 um. Hold on. The importance of videos it was, and it suddenly disappeared. I was looking through Aussie Man reviews as well. All right. Let's just see if I can find it. Importance of video marketing 
was what I wanted to share with you. So this is happening live, just in case you thought I made all this up. Of course, I'm not making it up. Um, otherwise, it would be done a lot faster and a lot better. Come on, search. Right, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to talk of the cough because it's kind of important to share with you anyway. Uh, and I think that if this might be it, I think this is it. Hold on. Come on. Right, there you go. That's the post I was looking for. Sorry about that. Um, anything can happen, said the Dalek climbing off the dustbin. And anyone can make a mistake as well. If you don't understand that, Google Dalek, Google dustbin. It's a very funny Doctor Who joke. So, eight reasons you need to think about why you should be using video for your marketing. Let's go down to break it down to the, the main stuff. When you do video, it can really improve conversions and also your sales. I'm just wondering why this isn't showing now. Let me take it out, put it back in, and hopefully it won't make any difference. It's really messing up today, isn't it? We have it here, good. Right, see, that's how you put it together. And I wanted it there. Right, let's go back to the beginning. If you just join me, forget the last 10 minutes of me trying to do this show live and messing up with it completely. Eight powerful reasons why you need to use video marketing and you need to plan your show in advance. And uh, don't work with animals, don't work with dogs, and don't work with um, iPhones. But you have to, because they're very good. Okay, video boosts and your sales and conversions. People like to see a video. If you just talk about something or you just do a normal post or you do a video, especially an explainer video, people like it more. Okay, video, therefore, when you invest in it and you do it properly, there's a great return in investments of doing videos as opposed to any other kind of medium. Number three, it builds trust. People get to know who you are. With this video, I don't hide anything. Even when things go wrong and I get frustrated with it, I still share it with you. You've just seen me mess up live with uh, with Twitter just jumping into my phone and wanting to be registered. So why have I not got Twitter on that phone? Because it keeps popping up all the time and notifying. Why don't you turn all the notifications off, Dave? I know. You're not my mother. Leave it. Okay. Number four is Google loves videos. If you want to get higher in the search rankings, then putting a video there automatically gives you an advantage over everybody else. So it's worthwhile considering that. And with that, you have to understand the SEO of it, the keywords, and the things that make people watch a viral video. It doesn't have to be super viral like the things we've been examining today, but it has to be something that positions you different from the rest of the shows. And with this, this is my 79th show, I think, I've done a speak on stage. I've been learning all the way along, clearly not today, about how to make it better and more effective for people. Number five, uh, video appeals to mobile users. Think about what that used to mean to mobile users. People who are traveling around, people stuck in traffic, people on a train, just sitting there and just looking through. If you can see a video because it animates in front of you, people are used to watching TV. So it gives people more of a reason to be closer to your brand. And if you can produce the videos that reward them every time they come to you, They'll be looking for your videos and Google will naturally make sure that your videos show up more often than anybody else's. Video marketing can explain everything. This is true. When I talk to you about Speak On Stage, you'll see all the way through the show, I've got little videos, little trailers uh, explaining what the industry icon is and how important it is to speak on stage. But if I just post those videos alone, they still do the job. They still get out to show people what my business is and how I can help them, whether or not I actually do this full show or not. Video engages even the laziest buyers. Remember, you don't have to work so hard when you're using video. It just stares at you. It's there. So you can watch it until the end. Shorter is better, ideally about a minute or so, maybe even 30 seconds if you get it in with that, and you can do lots of different creative videos, then that can make people addicted to it, especially if it makes them laugh or cry or hate or, or just spit their food out when they're watching it. Okay, and it encourages social media shares. If it's effective and it gives the person who shares it some kind of kudos amongst the people that they're connected to, they will share it. It could either be that they're socially angry with what it is that you've put out and they just think, this is terrible, other people should see this, or it makes them laugh and they want to share it with their friends. It could be informative, it could be related to a particular industry, or it could just be the kind of thing you want to have when you're taking a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and taking a break. There's lots of different categories, 
But what used to happen before was you'd see advertising, you'd see videos that were made by big companies, big corporates that would just put out these incredible movie quality videos. And people would go, wow, and with the beautiful people in, you know, smoking a cigarette or driving a car or whatever the latest thing they want to sell. People now like to see real people. They don't really like seeing models and model families and, and artificial stuff because they don't believe it. They know it's fake advertising. It's not fake, it's real advertising, but fake people. So that's why it's kind of muddying the edges as to what you can create. But you should certainly invite video or involve video to be part of your moving forward. That's why doing your own TV show, even if you reach a very small audience, that small audience who does watch it will know the effectiveness of what you bring to the table. So there you go, eight powerful reasons why you need to consider having video as part of your marketing plan. Right then, um, it's really strange. I'm getting a phone call from South Korea at this moment of time on my mobile phone. I can tell you this, but what I'm going to say is I don't know who's in South Korea who wants to chat to me. But I can tell you who they are tomorrow if you catch up with the show. But I can't tell them right now because I'm live. Hey, that's the nature of live. And I know you're going to say, Dave, you should have put your phone on airplane mode so nobody could call it. And I say, yeah, but if I put it on airplane mode, then it means I wouldn't be able to use the Wi-Fi. So I wouldn't have been able to get that website that kept messing up on me just then. So that's why. Make sense? Cool. All right, so how to make viral videos. I'm going to share with you now. The things that I did studying it. Now, I haven't really made viral videos because I'm not that bothered about it being viral. The stuff that I do is quite specialist. I train people to become effective in their industry. Not everybody wants to do it. And something like 99% of people have a massive fear of public speaking. And they might want to do something about it. But the idea of them being out there saying, hi, guys, look at me. I'm brilliant at this. They really don't have a, a desire to do it. Why? Because it's not their company or they don't really want to share anything or they haven't got much to say or for whatever reason. So mine's quite niche, deliberately quite niche. So let's look at this. This is actually me speaking at NASA. If I move my head to that side, you see the NASA sign. And if you've been to that actual um, briefing center, then you'll rec recognize the astronauts on stage. And there you go. So let's look at the things that you need to do. Create a viral video. First of all, this. Don't necessarily aim for any particular audience. Create the, create the video and go for it. There are no guarantees it's going to win. You can orchestrate it, you can go for it. There are a number of different elements like the influencers who pick up on it and then share it with others. You can engineer a viral video, but it is very difficult. Not everything is going to be guaranteed to work. But what you should aim at, first of all, is a branding video and then see if that can go viral. So even if it reaches a few people, it still lets them know that you do what it says on the tin and your business is still effective and really good for you. Does that make sense? Good. All right, number two, if you constantly have fun, people will love your brand. Um, so whenever you're making videos, that's kind of a really key element. Make these videos so people enjoy being with them. It, you will probably find, and we found it with the Toilet Paper Diaries when we first started making this show. It was on last night, by the way, and I may show the replay tomorrow because it's really good. Uh, when you make these videos, people who will like it will come back again, and they usually bring a friend, and then they start to share it, and it's an ongoing snowballing and growing effect that you need to have. It's got to start somewhere. So, for instance, when you look at podcasts, like the biggest in the world at the moment is probably um, Joe Rogan. So Joe Rogan does this incredible podcast where he gets 180 million downloads. Now, it never started like that. You could have a, Joe, you could have a number of different elements that, that hit it. Joe Rogan is a well-known superstar comedian and TV presenter and actor. He's also in a lot of viral videos and a number of different TV shows. He also happened to start this show about 12 years ago, and it's grown incrementally from then at a time before podcasts were big, so he could kind of dominate. And so with that, he's had a number of guests and the guests that he gets on are always current. So that has an ongoing mushrooming effect on everything. So that's where it starts. Now you can start now and you should start now. If you don't start, then how are you going to know what effect you're going to have in a year, two years, three years time? That should be your aim, not what it feels like right now, because you will stop. Otherwise, you'll feel disheartened and say, well, you know, it doesn't work. Chant to a dear friend of mine, Andrew Locke, he was telling me about his TV show. Um, help my business sucks. He said it took me six months before it took off. 
Six months I was doing a show every week or every other day and people were, just weren't showing up and I was wondering why is it not working? Then suddenly it exploded and became a huge brand. And uh, you should connect with Andrew Locke, he's a genius, really cool guy as well. Number three, target strong emotions. Now these are two things that you should really consider. The two things that you should consider are what makes things viral. And it's two extremes of people's attitude and two extremes of the emotional way that people relate to stuff. So people will share things if they make them laugh and they'll share things if they make them angry. In between, nothing. If it makes you happy, don't care. Makes you moody, don't care. Makes you feel guilty, don't care. Makes you feel bit pity or bitter or anything, don't care. It's got to make people laugh because it's really funny or make people angry because it's just terrible. Think about the Karen videos recently. The Karen videos where predominantly white, um, well-to-do ladies are picking on people of color, predominantly in the US, and telling them, it's almost like mansplaining, it's white-splaining effectively, why they shouldn't be doing this and they shouldn't be doing that. Captured on video, and that became a thing, like cop videos. Now, I'm not having to go white people or black people or anything, I'm just explaining that's how they became viral, because people got really angry about them. If it was just that they went up and said, hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Nobody would care. It's not viral enough, because if you send it to your friend, your friend would go, yeah, what, you got keep people getting on of different color? Good, well, I'm happy with it. Why are you sharing with me? I'm busy. So that's why it works. All the videos that you've seen, like the Harlem Shake and all the rest of it, because they're really funny, they get people wanting to share it with others. Number five, post strategically and keep pushing. So what do I mean by post strategically? What I mean is choose a time of day of when you're gonna be sharing it. So when it comes down to, you do, you do it maybe first thing in the morning, uh, and then you start pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. So that lunchtime, more people will take a break, will go, oh, what's on? Oh, let's have a look at this. And they start to like it, and they start to share it. And so you can do it at the beginning of the week as well. Now, it depends on who your audience is. You need to know the time zones you're talking to, because nowadays you've got a global audience. Do you have more followers in this country that you're in, or say in America, Australia, or the UK? You need to maybe think about posting it for their time zones so there's a better chance of it becoming a bigger thing. Posting out the bigger the thing at the beginning of the week means you can have a slow burning video that's doing well until the weekend where people are off and then it reaches people and it explodes. Many of the people who got viral videos didn't know they were going to be that big. But there's so many people trying for it now, you really need to engineer it. Keeping it short is important. I know that this video that I'm making today is never going to be viral doesn't have to be. I'm reaching an audience with yourself, and I know you'll stay in for, for the time that you're having a cup of tea, cup of coffee, or maybe jump out, or maybe come back in again, or catch you on a different show. I've got my own strategy for doing it, and I do make short videos that do have impact and do have effect, and they do very well, but that's not the plan for this particular show. But if you want to make it viral, don't waste people's time. You want to be able to get them to look at it, and they go, wow, wow. I've seen videos, special LinkedIn and TikTok, seven second videos, go viral. They go crazy big, but here's the thing. It will be viral, people will share it, they will like it, they may comment on it, but does it help your particular brand? Does it make people go, you know what, you're great at it? Or does the overall impact position you as an influencer and the fact you've got so many people watching your stuff, do you monetize that with sponsors who wanna connect with a big audience? Depends whether you're selling your services or your products. If you're just selling your reach, then viral videos are fantastic. Number six, optimize it with keywords and SEO. Whatever you're creating, you want to know that it fits in with the trends and things that are going on around the world. If you don't do that, you end up with a challenge, a big challenge in the fact that you might have something that really works for you. Some people might like it, but it doesn't get onto the algorithms of each of the platforms where you put it. You want it to start being a trend and a search that people are looking for anyway. Not everything has to be, but this is a perfect storm you're trying to create. So ideally, you want to be looking at stuff that's going on that people like and jumping on the bandwagon and making it relevant. Number seven, quality. The better the quality, even if it's like that video where I showed the lady dancing, it wasn't great quality, but it wasn't grainy. And the music on it, the original one, was edited so it repeated itself over and over again at each step where she's dancing to the same song and she records the same song. I had to take the song off because it was quite popular and it would just get... it blocked but you've got to make sure that it's worth watching because people's quality standards go up and up and up you can get away with something if it's bad quality but it has to be stunning 
Like the time you came out of the lift and, and met Donald Trump, who then gave you a hug and gave you a high five and we walked back in the lift. That could be grainy. You could actually drop the phone on the floor and pick it up again and go, Donald Trump, doesn't matter. Whoever it is, Donald Trump, uh, uh, Barack Obama, there are other leading members of the political scene available. But the point is that it will only be quality uh, it'll only be forgiven if it's a stunning thing. If you're trying to create a viral video, you better make it good. All right, so I mentioned they're posting at the beginning of the week with a review to make it bigger at the weekend. That's important as well. And also this, align with current trends. If you go into Google Trends, and it depends what part of the world you're in, actually, to find the trends that matter to you or trends that matter to your people or your audience, if you look at the trends that are going on, whether it's the latest pop song or it's another viral video that's really going to uh, big guns, because you can jump on the bandwagon of existing viral videos. That cinnamon challenge, for instance, if I decided to be as stupid as that lady by taking cinnamon, and I guarantee that was strategic. The water was placed, the oh my goodness, what ladle. She'd thought about it beforehand, maybe she hadn't tried it, and the reaction that you got was genuine, but she'd set it out to really give it the best shot. And 50 million views and the growth that would give her branding, but people want to find out what she's going to do next, was worth the discomfort of three minutes. Does it position her well? Well, it depends. It depends in that case with Glozell, whether she wants to be seen as that woman who did the cinnamon challenge, or she's got other things like fashion or makeup or, or humor or whatever she wants to sell. I don't know her brand, but I certainly know her name. And so do you. So that video worked. Okay, so next up, we want to be looking at the final thing, which is this. You've got aligning with current trends, but you also want to make sure when you put it together, you stay engaged and you keep monitoring your post. You can't just post it and leave it. You can't set it and forget it. You've got to keep working on it again and again and again and babysit it through the process. And sometimes it fizzles out and it does stop. And sometimes it works out to be absolutely perfect and you can feel it growing. It's like trying to light fireworks with a wet match. Sometimes it just doesn't come off, but when it does explode, it's worth it. So for everybody who's got a viral video that people talk about, there might be another 10 that we tried to do that didn't work out. So you have to decide, do I want to have viral videos or do I just want to have fun? I would suggest going for fun is better because if you do something that makes you laugh, makes your friends laugh, then the odds are that will start gathering speed. Think about it from this point of view. Have you ever seen the Oscars? You know people who get Oscars and you think, well, they actually did a better movie before. I'm surprised they won an Oscar for this movie. It's because they deserved it for such a long time. They gave it to them because on this movie, they were good, but it's about time they won. Leonardo DiCaprio being a prime example of that. So it's the same with viral videos, apart from not everybody's judging, not everybody wants to see you win, but it does kind of have the same effect. So if you have a look at this, make a screenshot, how to make a viral video. And uh, next up, let's just discover what you need to do to have more impact with the industry icon program. So if you just join me, nice to see you. Welcome to Speak On Stage. My name is Dave Crane. I mentioned this earlier. I'm going to go through it again just in case you missed it. If you go to this page here, speakonstage.com, above you, you will see the industry icon, the gold button. Click on that, and then you go through to this page, and you're going to scroll down past the video, and you can see, take the free survey over here. Click on that button, and you get taken to the survey. From there, you can work out how effective you are with your brand, with your impact, with your relationships, and with your sponsors. It will give you a load of different ideas and tips, hopefully about the show is doing, to be able to pursue where you want to be and reposition yourself. Because right now, it's a wild west in advertising. Right now, it's a wild west online as companies are changing, going from bricks and mortar to, uh, to sign an order, which is pretty much what people are looking for. Now, it's all about doing stuff online. If you don't have a brand, you don't have a name, then this will really help you get Get there and your best brand is yourself think about the biggest companies on the planet they tend to grow there because there's somebody at the, at the center of it virgin is richard branson apple is now still steve jobs microsoft bill gates now not every brand needs to have a figurehead but it can be useful when they have somebody who's very charismatic or is able to stand out there and represent the brand your company, whatever your service is, whatever your product is, the best way to, to position it is you. And if you had your own TV show all about it, you might not get everybody loving it, but what you would get is people who really want to work on it with you because they find it fascinating. 
So with that, let's have a very quick look at this. This is a kind of thing you get from the roadmap. When you look at the roadmap, let's look at number two on this. I work with you on, this, on the Industry Outcome Program. Just fill them a survey and then request a chat with me and I'll go through what the basics are with this and we'll see how suited you are to be able to grow your brand. So everything from your social media account to your blogs or your videos, creating your fans and followers, partnerships, cross-pollination with other brands at the same time, winning awards, repositioning yourself, creating an online store to make money out of the whole thing, getting affiliate sales, selling other people's stuff, being sponsored, coached and mentored, or maybe you want to coach and mentor people yourself. All these things are part of your basic ecosystem. Every single one of them either gets you marketing points or they can earn for you. I go through that because when I work with people, I want them to be successful and I want them to make a ton of money. So with that, contact me, go to Speak On Stage, do the survey, and we'll have a chat about all this stuff later on. So that's my little show today. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, I try and pull in for just about an hour, which is great for the podcast. Dave, have you got a podcast? Yeah, the Toilet Paper Diaries. Have you got a this show? No, not yet, but I will do. When are you going to do it? As soon as I take a break. When is it going to break? Um, as soon as we get a weekend. When's a weekend? I don't know anymore. It's all a big blur. You probably found that yourself. Not to worry. Right, we're going to leave you with a video, and I love your thoughts and comments. Thank you so much for being with me for this and uh, sharing your time. It's always an honor to have you there. If you are a serious speaker, I've got something very special for you where you can get gigs. I will help you get gigs. I promise you, it's a really cool thing. You gotta look at it. It's cool. well, I'll tell you about it when you can't. Contact me directly. If you wanna contact me within the, the direct message opportunities there, or just leave me a message in the comments. Um, actually, send me a direct message if you can do, because otherwise I have to watch a whole hour again of me to find out whether you commented or not. So contact me directly. There's lots of different ways of doing it, um, just on the social media platform that you are, or connect with me directly through LinkedIn, and then just send me a message as you connect. I will share with you how to get loads of gigs online as a speaker, and they are out there, and it's really fascinating, and you can earn great money from using your laptop, digital stagecraft, and so on. But the big challenge for everybody is when you start making videos, you get worried about what people are going to think about you. People are going to laugh at you, going to think I'm stupid. I'm going to attract haters and trolls, and the simple answer is yes, you are, but you're also going to attract fans and friends and followers who get into a frenzy because they appreciate what it is that you're doing. It's a double-edged sword, but right now it's the fastest way to create a market that wants to work with you and people who respect you, and it can be done for a very small, if a zero, budget. I hope you enjoyed today's show. More great subjects coming up. I hope you joined us last night for the Toilet Paper Diaries. If not, look on this platform, go back to my previous post, and you'll see what a cool show it was about how to unite America with my brother from another mother based over there in Houston, Ernesto Badugo. So for me right now, it's thank you for being here. As always, it's a pleasure. And this is Haters on Trolls up next on Speak on Stage. Take care. Hi, I'm Dave Crane. Let's talk about haters and trolls. If you want to be loved, like you were at school, very simply don't do anything with your life. Sit there quietly, don't interfere, and let the whole world pass you by. But here's a challenge, the world's not going to pass you by, because the world is going to move around you, and leave you exactly where you were standing, or where you were sitting. You have to move, you have to break some eggs to make an omelette, and you have to make a decision on what is your brand going to be. Will it be validated? Will you be loved? Will you get haters? Will you get trolls? You can get all the above. And when you start your business for yourself or for somebody else, it's gonna take twice as long to get what you want and cost twice as much as you predict. There'll be some who like you, there'll be some who hate you, but the truth is none of that matters. All that really matters is what you think of you. You start moving, you start making a decision. And you start thinking, oh no, people are criticizing you. And the whole thing is, we got taught from a very early age to deal with people's criticism by thinking it's really valid. But it's not. It only matters if you can use it and turn your business into a more successful way to look after yourself, your friends, your family, your holidays, the people that you truly care about. Everything else is just other people's opinion. 
and someone decided it was a good idea to tell you how to be small. F those people. Be as big as you can be, as big as you want to be, because it's none of their darn business. You're never going to get everybody to like you. At school you didn't, but here's the thing, 50% of a person you are was probably formed in the school playground and not in the educational forum where you studied and worked really hard to get your exams. Your ability to get on with people, your ability to learn to learn, to network, to sell, to create relationships is what's creating the you right now. Think about your fame, think about your connections, think about your brand, think about some of the biggest names in the world. It doesn't matter how popular you are, there's always someone somewhere who hates your guts, who hates the way you talk, hates the way you walk, and hates the fact that you breathe. F them as well. You get paid for two things. The effect of a job you do, and how cheaply you can get replaced by somebody else. If you want to be found, you've got to create a brand. If you want to get paid, you've got to start going out on a limb as an artist and creating stuff that nobody else is creating in the market. And if you want to be loved, get a dog. You get one go at this life, get off your ass, go out, break some eggs, make the best omelette possible. Want more help? I'll be out there with you. That's my guarantee to you.